person's going really slow. Yeah, this V6 is torquey. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. First and foremost, so a huge shout out and thank you to the Larich Miller Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for giving me some time with this Grand Cherokee. This one and several others are available for sale right now. If you're interested, check out the inventory in the description down below. On a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into the video. So under the hood, we have a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 293 horsepower and then 260 pound feet of torque. Now let's go to the front end of the Overland. So first off, just like the Grand Cherokee L, you've got this large flat hood and that kind of just dips down here on either side. And then coming here, you guys can see with the LED headlights and then you've got the daytime running light just up above that. Jeep's signature grille here. Notice the chrome accenting around each little piece. Notice there's a camera there in the center. And then we've got a fog light down below with parking sensors integrated here into the front. And then notice the chrome tow hooks with more chrome trim all around. Now do this, I do have this at the higher ride height setting is what I was trying to say. And so it's a little bit taller than what it normally is, but it looks really cool. Coming on the side here, we've got two 65 millimeter tires wrapped around 20 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see the design here on the wheels themselves. You've got the silver here on the top and then it's dark metallic gray below that. So it makes the wheel look more open than it actually is. Now this does have the air suspension. I've got it in the higher ride height setting. So you guys can see what it looks like all extended out. And then notice here with the fender flare, how that's body painted. We have our Grand Cherokee logo. And then you've got the blacked out mirrors with that chrome trim that continues all along the side here. We do have side steps as well. And then if we take a few steps back, you can see the full side view here. And with the air suspension extended up, it looks really cool. Now here's our key fob. We have the Jeep logo there on the back. We have our unlock lock function, the opening here for the hatch and then the remote start function. You can also just open the hatch with this little button right here on the hatch itself. Now popping inside here, uh, what you'll notice first off, so we've got stuff for the sound system prominently, but we've got a 12 volt here in the back. And again, since this is not the L, we don't have a third row. You can see the spare tire here underneath, um, but this makes it pretty practical from storage space perspective with the rear because you don't have that third row. And then I also love the trim here. And yeah, when you're all done, all you gotta do is just press this button right there and then it'll lower the hatch right back down. Wait for it. There we go. Now let's finish things up with the rest of the rear. You guys can see again with that trim that continued all the way here to the back, but it kind of just like abruptly stops. We do have some black trim here at the top. I love the taillights here and it actually goes into this black trim piece to the Jeep logo. So it looks like it's all connected. We have our Overland badge down below, parking sensors here at the bottom. And then we've got pretty cool covers over the exhaust tips. And you have the bezel here that would cover the receiver hitch. And well, there's the rest of the rear. Now here's the door panel in the back. We have a sunshade right here. And then notice with the wood trim, and then we've got the silver trim down below that. And then the leather padding here with the stitching that goes across. We've got a door lock and unlock here with our window control. We've got a few speakers for the Macintosh sound system. And then here are the seats. Pop up the headrest right there so you can see it. Again, look at the stitching all throughout perforated here in the center portion. And then you got that side step, um, but it's pretty easy just step across even with the air suspension up. Here's the legroom room as well and I'm just seeing if the seats have any sort of like seat adjustment things on them here on the side nope but anyways notice here with the cup holder armor situation and then we do have our own climate controls here in the back so you can see we've got uh, two different zones back here and heated seats so nice luxury feature there got a bunch of charging ports down below as well and then notice here's what the seat looks like when it's folded down and then you can just easily lift that up and put it into place yourself let's head to the front well, I was a little bit wrong. We do have the um, seat fold down function, but you can also use this to recline the seats backwards. So uh, we do have a recline function here in the rear. Now here's the door panel at the front. Uh, notice it's soft touch here at the top and we got more of that wood trim, more silver trim down below that. We've got memory seats. We'll talk about this in just a moment. Blind spot marring for the mirrors and then you can see the leather trim down below with the stitching that goes throughout. 
automatic windows here and then notice with the mirror adjustment another speaker for the macintosh sound system jeep logo right there and then here's the front seat notice with the stitching overland and then you can see perforated all down the center portion we've got all of our adjustments here on the side and here's the pedal layout down below got our parking brake right here with the light control just up above and then notice the wood trim and the silver trim around and then the padding as well steering wheel is power adjustable let's pop in Now here is the steering wheel for the Overland. You guys can see we've got nice leather trim all around and then notice here with the stitch in the center and then the wood trim right there. We've got our Jeep logo again with more stitching. We do have our adaptive cruise control here with the steering assistance. Paddle shifters here on the back for the eight speed and there are radio controls down below the paddle shifters. And then notice we got controls here for the center stack. We have a regular turn signal stock, windshield wiper stock and well, there's the steering wheel. Now here is the center gauge cluster. We've got a full digital dash here, which I think looks really cool. Um, we can scroll through a couple different menus here to see different bits of info on it. And sorry about my camera not really wanting to focus just because the lighting's kind of crazy today. Um, but you guys can see all the different bits of info. You can see, notice that we're in the off-road too for the height. Uh, I just put it up so you guys can kind of see what it looks like uh, in that ride height setting. Uh, but anyways, we do have some different drive modes we can go through. So first off, we got our sport mode, auto, snow, mud and sand and then we have our rock mode and these different drive modes will adjust the air suspension and the driving dynamics of the vehicle to obviously fit that drive mode so imagine in like rock crawl mode the air suspension is going to be completely up so you have the most amount of ground clearance and then sport mode is going to be down more so that you are the most aerodynamic and you know sportiest driving right we have our auto stop start here at the top. You can turn off lane departure, stability control, hazard lights, parking sensors, and then you're gonna turn off the uh, passenger screen here with that little button. We'll kind of go over that passenger screen thing in a moment. Anyways, here is the infotainment system. So first off, if we pop it into reverse, we've got a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. You got that bird's eye view. And notice all of the different viewpoints here with the camera, and you can even zoom in. And look at that, we've got tire marks here. So if you do take it off road, then you can see exactly where you're going. Now, as for the rest of the screen, um, it's kind of hard to see, but notice we've got the shortcut bar here at the bottom. So that lets you just go into different screens. Response time with the screen is really solid. And I feel like this is just very nicely integrated into the dash. And so I'd have to say that uh, Jeep did a really good job with it. Now down below, we've got some analog controls for the radio. We have analog controls for the heated and cooled seats and the climate system. And then we have our charging area here. So wireless phone charger, USBs, 12 volts, all that. And then you can cover it up if you don't want to see it. Drive mode select is this little switch here we have our four wheel drive low and then you have your transmission dial selector here this is for the air suspension and then your hill descent control and this has a true neutral and then notice with the cup holder situation and you can see with the center console set up you got the two different openings and then popping over here to the glove box see that's pretty solid so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you guys can kind of see the shortcut bar here on the side with the passenger screen. It's basically like a little mini infotainment system where you can adjust uh, a few things here, as you guys can see. Let's actually turn up the brightness way up so you can see it a little bit better. Um, but also I can manage headphones, volume, all that kind of stuff, but basically just second infotainment system so you can control stuff from here rather than from the center. Now you can see here, again, with the dash, really nice padding. Again, just material use looks fantastic. Got the speakers again for the sound system. And that button right there is for the massaging seats. So as you can see, turns it on. Pretty cool setup. And then we have our camera mirror here at the top, which is another nice thing. And then at the very top, we have a panoramic sunroof. Got the controls here for the sunroof and then for the hatch as well. And there you go. Now here's a window sticker for this Grand Cherokee Overland. Um, feel free to freeze frame if you want to read all of the standard equipment. Sorry about the glare here. Um, and then you guys can see with the optional equipment. So first off, base price $56,240. And then we've got quite a bit of optional equipment added to this, including the Luxury Tech Group 4 and then the Advanced Pro Tech Group 3. Lots of uh, numbers and everything. Anyways, total price in this one, $66,725. And let's see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility of the hood. You guys can now see the heads up display as well, hopefully. Both the mirrors, which do have blind spot monitoring and then throughout the rest of the rear. And the most important thing before we set off, gotta make sure we're getting a massage. There we go. We're gonna go high and let's set off. 
Setting off in this Grand Cherokee Overland, and I've got the air suspension in the higher ride height setting right now. I just want to see kind of how it drives at the top of the suspension, see how uh, stiff it is or how soft it is. Is this person just going to sit here? Doo -doo -doo. Is there anyone even in that car? There is nobody in that car. That's awkward. Um, well, anyways, other than a uh, car randomly sitting there for no apparent reason, let's set off. So definitely like most air suspension systems, when you have it in the higher setting, it's not super stiff, but yeah, you definitely do feel things quite a bit more. Automatically lowering though, which is pretty cool so that it'll be a little bit of a softer ride. Yeah, I can already kind of feel it because there's now something for the suspension to compress into. So we're now in the off-road one. I'm gonna go down to normal because I assume that people are gonna be driving this in the normal ride height and they're not gonna be driving it in the off-road ride height. But it's cool that you can go relatively quick in off-road one. Just still gives you a little bit more ground clearance. So now we've achieved normal height. It says normal height achieved, that's so funny. Yeah, it's very smooth and comfortable. Very, very comfortable. Yeah, and this actually does feel different uh, compared to the Grand Cherokee L. Um, you know, obviously they're sibling vehicles, right? Third row versus the two row. Um, this is smaller than the L, but yeah, good torque out of the V6. I'm gonna pop into the sport mode. It's lowering it again with the air suspension. Like I said, with the drive modes, it'll change things up. So now we're in aero mode, which is the same thing as what it'll do when you go on the interstate. Um, when you're going at higher speeds so that you are more aerodynamically efficient, right? But yeah, I see comfort's great too with the Overland. Um, I really like how this feels so far, actually. I think it's a very comfortable vehicle. That person's going really slow. Yeah, this V6 is torquey. This thing moves, that is for sure. Gonna pop it back into auto, um, which it should raise the suspension back up. Yep, it's raising the suspension back up. Yeah, the eight-speed automatic's really responsive too. That helps out quite a bit. But yeah, let's sum things up here with this Grand Cherokee Overland. I think it looks great on the outside. I prefer the proportions of the regular Grand Cherokee to the L. I think it's just a better looking vehicle, but obviously the L has the practicality of having the third row. And then from an interior perspective, the Overland's very nice. It's a full-blown luxury vehicle inside. And then driving dynamics are great. It's comfortable. Um, the air suspension's great with the adjustability and again, helps out with the ride comfort quite a bit. Man, we just have people sitting in the middle of roads, sitting in the middle of driveways. This is <laughs> complete chaos right now. Um, but overall, I'm really impressed. Um, you know, the Grand Cherokee sells very well for Jeep and with this new iteration, it's gonna continue to sell uh, very well. And if you want the more bougie version, that's what the Overland is. This basically gives you all the luxury features without having to pay the Summit price. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's gonna sum things up for our video on this Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. Again, a huge shout out, thank you to the Larry H. Miller Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for giving me some time with this Grand Cherokee. Check out the inventory in the description down below. I will see all of you in the next video.